When it comes to shading in Blender, it can be incredibly frustrating, getting those really nasty shading warps all over the place and not knowing what to do. So in this video, I want to show you two different methods that I use all the time. One is to isolate the shading, and two is to make the shading truly perfect. I'll show you both methods. Now before we do that, make sure you pick up our new Topology Handbook 2.0. We updated it, it's totally free, and it discusses a lot of tricky topology situations that you'll probably run into when you're doing hard surface modeling in Blender. It's a very short course, a lot of value in there, and it's free, so you can pick that up in the link in the top of the description. So I'm going to use a really basic example here to demonstrate. So oftentimes what you'll find yourself doing is, you know, you'll have a curved surface and you'll want to run a cut inside that curved surface. So maybe, you know, I'll come in here and just run like a circular cut on the inside like that. And you're going to see the shading goes crazy. And that's because in polygon modeling software, when we're running booleans on curved surfaces, it goes, um, it gets pretty messy. So we need to fix that. So the first way that I use is I just isolate the shading. So the reason the shading's nasty in the first place is because this boolean created these n-gons here on the curved surface. So now Blender doesn't actually know how to display these. So you're going to see that these n-gons, these are all n-gons right here. There's more than four vertices per, um, per face, right? And what's happening is these n-gons stretch from the bottom where the cut is, this little cutout, all the way up to the top. So what we need to do is isolate the shading. So to do that, what I do before applying the boolean modifier, let me just undo this. Before I apply my boolean modifier, I like to run some loops straight through the middle here because what this is gonna actually do, if I apply this again, this is going to push the shading, the nasty shading issues into these areas here. So these n-gons and triangles are now a lot smaller and the rest of these are simply quads with clean shading, right? So that's the way I use a lot. Now you're also gonna to wanna to do this on the cutter itself because we have the same issue on the inside. We have these n-gons here on a curved surface, so all we need to do is make sure we also do that to our cutter. Just run some loop cuts in here like this. And now we're basically gonna have perfect shading. Now the issue with this method is that although the shading is pretty clean, it is definitely not perfect. And if we kind of go into matcap, as we move around, you're gonna see it's um, it's uh, pretty nasty. You can see these nasty warps around here. So the second method is to use a data transfer modifier. And I do wanna clarify, I'm not too concerned about situations like this, especially since I do a lot of concept work. Um, the shading artifacts that are this small aren't really ever noticeable unless you're looking at it from a steep angle. So in many cases, this is acceptable for me because I can always fix it up in post, but I want to show you how to make this truly perfect. So the second method is to actually use what we call a data transfer modifier. So I'm going to do the same exact thing here. I'm going to run a Boolean cut like this. Now this time, we don't even need to bother adding in isolation loops because we're going to be using a different method. So for this method, what we need to do is we need to run a bevel. Just going to run a small little bevel around here. Now you're going to see this bevel is actually causing some uh, overlaps on the geometry. So I'm actually going to apply this Boolean. And if I select an edge and then alt click this edge with Mesh Machine, I could actually just run an offset cut, give myself some room there, and then bevel it like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add in another cylinder. So this new cylinder right here has perfect shading because we don't have a Boolean in it, but this one here has nasty shading. So we're going to transfer the shading from this one over to this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take note of the name of the clean one, cylinder 004. I'm going to take this piece, add a data transfer modifier. The source is going to be that cylinder 004. Face corner data, custom normals, and then projected face interpolated. Now it kind of worked, but you're going to see we have some problems on the inside, and that's because this one here doesn't have an inside, so it doesn't know how to transfer the data to one that does have an inside. So basically, we need to make sure this modifier is only applying to certain areas of the mesh. And we can do that by creating a vertex group. So what we're going to do is go into face mode. I'm going to alt click on one of these strips of faces on the bevel. Go to select, and then select more, 
and then press shift R. What that'll do is um, repeat the command. And now we're selecting all the areas with nasty shading here on the outside. And all we have to do is go here and assign a new vertex group. Click on the assign button. There it is. And now check this out. If I go in here and choose that vertex group, there we go. Now it is a little messy here on the top. So usually what I do to fix that is I simply just run a, um, you can just run like a knife cut here and then just cut through. Just symmetrize the bottom or whatever. And now if we just go back to our vertex group um, and do the same thing, just remove it and add a new one. So that way it's not really affecting the top and causing that weird problem. And then we can assign it, select and deselect. And now if we go into object mode, now we have truly perfect shading here on the outside. See that? Absolutely no issues. So those are the two different ways to deal with shading problems in Blender. I prefer method number one because most of the time I'm not too concerned with making the shading perfect. I just want it to be good enough so I can get on with my work. Now I don't believe you can export this to another software, so this would be kind of internal to Blender, but it is very useful in situations where you want to get super clean shading. And I actually used this method in one of my recent videos on form and functions, so if you want to see that, in a more practical example, you can check out that video as well. So again guys, topology can be tricky and cause all sorts of different issues. So if you want to learn more about that, check out my Topology Handbook 2.0. It's a free course on our website and has a lot of valuable information in there that I think you'll enjoy. So check that out. That's it for this video. Hope it helped you out and I'll see you in the next one.